So what we're going to do, we're going to find, just like in stoichiometry, we're going to start with moles. Remember the moles of this using the ideal gas law because we have volume, pressure, temperature. So it's a very ideal gas law. Then we're going to find the moles of this using the ideal gas law because we have volume, pressure, temperature. And then we got P total after mixing, we're going to sum those moles, we're going to sum the volumes, and we're going to use the ideal gas law to find P total. Is that, well, that's our flow. Uh, that's what you'll see me do. Okay. Okay, so let's start with hydrogen. That's the one on the left. This container before mixing, just to figure out how many moles of it we'll have. Um, we can find that using the ideal gas law. So PV over RT if you solve for N. P is uh, 760 millimeters of mercury, though I want to match this with the R that we're using, so I have to change this to atmospheres. So it's 700 in the numerator, 760 millimeters of mercury, for every one atmosphere in the numerator. Okay, that's pressure. Now let's do volume. The volume is 2.35 liters, and that's in the correct units for our, for our R. R now, 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Temperature is 24, but it has to be in Kelvin, so that's Celsius, so 24 plus 273. So far so good? Exact same thing now for the other side, which is helium. So on the right hand side, we need the moles of helium. PV over RT. And the exact same thing, this is just using the ideal gas law to find moles. And there's actually other ways to solve this. I think this, for me, this is just the most consistent way. It's not to say the shortest way. Um, but there's a lot of problems that can be solved using the same solving strategy. So that's why I teach this one. Uh, 729 millimeters of mercury. Again, it has to be an atmosphere, so 1 atm for every 760 millimeters of mercury. That's P. V is 3.24. That's so PV, on the bottom we'll have RT, the same R, 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And in this case we have the same temperature, so we don't have to worry about temperature, it's 24. 24 plus 273 to change it to Kelvin. So now I have the moles of H2 on the left side and the moles of helium on the right. If I add these up, and total, which will be our total moles, once we've mixed, is going to be the moles of hydrogen plus the moles of helium. So far, so good? Okay. Now, remember they wanted what's the total pressure upon opening the valve and allowing them to mix. So, P total, I'll go over here. The total we'll also get from the ideal gas law because we know everything. We'll know N total. We've actually already calculated it. R, we know that. We know T because they're both at the same temperature. So T is not going to change. And now the volume's bigger, so there'll be a total volume. Is that okay? That's just the ideal gas law solving for pressure. But now we're doing it for the whole thing, whereas before the first one we did for the left side, second one we did for the right side. Now we're doing it for the whole thing. Okay, so n total, I don't have that numerically, but whatever that calculates out to be from the previous part, R doesn't change, because this is the one we're going to use for the ideal gas law, so it's 0.08206 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. The temperature uh, didn't change. That's going to be up to 
I'm going to get a little out of camera range, I think, but I'll write like this. 24 plus 273. Hopefully that stays in the camera. Okay? So you had 24 to 273, the temperature didn't change. The volume is going to change because now it's bigger. It's, they can go back and forth between the right and the left. So this could be 2.35 plus 3.24. Uh, of 2.35 plus 3.24. It's going to be in liters, and that'll be the total volume. Whatever that number ends up to be is going to be the total pressure of both of the system once you've opened the valve. 